Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now today is Friday. Hey, listen, this week was explosive. I'm telling you the truth. And I'll encourage you, if you're planning what to do this weekend, go listen to the message from Monday to today. This one, listen to this one again. Say, I spoke to you about the richness of your soul yesterday. And I mean it. Well, before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Now remember, Friday's daily bread is so important because you're going to gather enough that will last you the whole weekend. Praise God. And listen, you don't have to wait for this broad. On your own, learn to ask for your daily bread. Daily. Jesus said we should do it. So why don't you just obey Jesus? Are you ready? Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right then. Our text. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Listen, we are his handiwork. We are his workmanship. He created us for this work that he prepared beforehand that we should walk in it. And what is this work that he's called us to do? The work he spoke about from the very beginning. He said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So, hey, brothers and sisters, every work he is leading us to do is to bring our soul to understand that we are in him and he is in us. Every work. See, sometimes... Even as preachers, we do so much work and we forget the purpose. Jesus said, you shall be witnesses unto me. And all we can think about is carry our Bibles and go from place to place and preaching and telling people about Jesus. He didn't say you shall be telling people about me alone. Yes, he gave us an assignment, go and make disciples of me from all nations. Yes. So there is the ministry, there is the preaching part we need to do. But when we do that, it's for one purpose. Our life is supposed to be a witness to his testimony. So everything Jesus stands for is what you should represent. Is what your life will be a testimony of. Every intent of Jesus, every word of Jesus is what your life will represent, is what your life will show. So people who do, who do not know Jesus, when they meet you, they should know. Not you telling yourself, look, do you know I'm Jesus? You've met Jesus. So no. When they meet you and later start knowing about Jesus, they will remember you. God, I've met someone like this. Yeah. So you see, there is a way to check your growth in this thing. Are you doing the work? Remember, it's a work that was planned beforehand. And, and how do you know this work that was planned beforehand? Jesus instructed us that the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. Not some truth, all truth. So the work of the Holy Spirit in your life, now the Holy Spirit is the one who is in you and who is with you. Je the Holy Spirit is the one Jesus left us with. And that's, there, there's a reason for that. He didn't leave you in the hands of a preacher. He didn't leave you in the hands of a church or a ministry. He left you in the hands of the Holy Spirit. So everything you are doing, if it's not making you get to understand the Holy Spirit, you are in the wrong walk. Yes. If you're serving God in a church, if you're serving God as a minister, you might, you might be the head of your own ministry, and you're serving God in that ministry, if the issues you are dealing with is not bringing you into the place of knowledge, 
and becoming like him if if the because now let me let me explain i, I think on, on tuesday or wednesday i think on tuesday or so i was telling you about how you know maybe you 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 had this issue with someone who stole from you and then you you arrest the person or you're trying to get the person and then the lord says leave it say lord you stole from me leave it trust me and i'll bless you much more than that and I said, that's the voice of the Lord you are hearing. How do I know it's the voice of the Lord I'm hearing? Because it confirms the teaching and intent of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, give to every man that acts of you. And anyone who takes away your God, don't ask him back. You see? Now, because that's the, the mentality is to make us champions. Because the truth is you can make 10 times that amount of money in the next minute. You can, that's the ability that God has given to you. And also, you remember Paul was saying, why would you take your own brother to court? Is it not better you suffer to be, you allow yourself to be defrauded than for you to sin that sin against the brother? But the brother stole from me now. See? It's a mindset is given to us. And I'll choose to walk in that mindset. You, 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 see, you, you have to keep checking your life. How well am I conforming in his image? Now, in, in the process of time, as you're living your life, those things will happen. You have to deal with wicked men. You have to deal with cunning men. You have to deal with wicked and unreasonable men, as Paul puts it. But then your dealings is... To be a testimony to the fact that you believe in Jesus and you are a witness to him. You are not supposed to deal with life from your mind. You are supposed to deal with life leaning on the Holy Spirit. And what the Holy Spirit will be doing in you, which is the work now, thank you Lord Jesus, is to guide you into becoming the image and likeness of God. So you find out that someone defrauded you, he tells you, let it go. Ah, oh, Lord, let it go. Ah, so that's the mind of God, I should let go. Okay, I let go. Another time, so the fact that you let go doesn't mean they will not defraud you again. Another time, someone does the same thing to you in another way. Ah, Lord, he said, let it go. Okay, Lord. Now, now he's the one teaching you, it's not in your soul yet. See? Now you get to the point where such a thing happens and say, oh, somebody just defrauded you. Oh, really? So what should we do? You know, without even hearing from the Lord now, like, you know what? Just let it go. Ah, but, 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 no, just let it go. See, listen, in a few days, few weeks, we'll forget about it because we'll get much more than that. So why should we stress ourselves? Now what's going on? Now you made that decision from your mind. And now that decision that you made from your mind conforms to the mind of Christ. Now what has happened? You have grown from being your own mind to walking in the mind of Christ. And this will not happen by the Holy Spirit just telling you, when they steal your thing, don't trouble them, just stay back. Uh -uh. Jesus has already done the teaching. The Holy Spirit is still teaching us today. But then he teaches us by guiding us into the truth of these things. Are you getting what I'm saying? So someone offends you at work. What do you do? It's an opportunity for you to be a witness to Jesus and his teachings. Would you act based on your own? No, sometimes you act, you, you, you're just angry. You just do what you need to do. And then later on, you go back home. They always be said, but you didn't act. Oh, <laughs> Holy Spirit, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They said, now you need to go and apologize to those people. Lord, no, I've, I've apologized to you. That's okay. I'm not apologizing to anybody. They will now think that they won. No way, no way, no way. You know, you keep battling and battling. And now you know what I'm talking about. And sometimes you, you okay, Lord, I will go. And then you now go and apologize. Say, ah, Lord. Next time, I'll not do that. To see how they were looking at me. See, something happens again. He guides in the, in the same line. 
have a lot. It's not fair now. Is it every time? I've heard people tell me that. Is it every time that I will have to take the nonsense? See, you don't know what God is doing in your life. You don't know. He is not creating weaklings like some people think. No, he is not. He is creating tough people. Because whenever he tells you to let it go. Now, now, listen, there is a difference between you listening to me telling you let it go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And you listening to the Lord telling you let it go. There's a difference. When the Lord speaks to you, he bears the responsibility of that thing. When I speak to you, except I'm speaking to you by the word of the Lord directly. So what I'm saying now, you, you, you hear me, you know, oh, Pastor Tua is teaching that if someone takes your thing, just let go. And, oh, mm, I'll let go. Okay, I'll let go. Don't let go foolishly. Hear me? Don't let go foolishly. Let go in the name of the Lord. You see, because we're wise. We know how to go about getting our things back. But you see, that thing that is happening, the Lord might be involved in it. And the purpose for it is to bring you to the place of His image and His likeness. That's what I'm sharing with you. So now you've heard me say this and then you want to take action. Or maybe you've already started taking actions already. I said, now should I let go or should I not let go? You go back to the Lord and say, Lord, okay, what do you really think about this situation now? I, I just heard, you know, Pastor Tuba Judge talking about this and I'm in this situation. What do you, what's your mind concerning it? Now, what are you trying to do? You're trying to bring the responsibility to him. The Bible says, casting all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Now, you don't just do things because he had someone say so. You bring that thoughts to him and say, Lord, I never knew this before and I've already taken these steps. So what, what, what do you say? What's your mind for me? concerning this the moment the lord opens his mouth to tell you you know what i'll tell you to do what you heard let it go the moment he says that to you he has taken responsibility now not only will that thing be made be given back to you not necessarily from the person now okay but then also you will be conforming into his image if you just hear my word you will not conform into any image but if you hear his word, then he envelops you because you believe him. You agree with what he says to you. you. He envelops you and forms you into that same image. See how it works? This thing works by the word coming out of his mouth. Not by the preaching you heard. It's, it's important we hear preaching because when we hear preachings, they bring us information question then is what do you do with the information you hear every message you hear and i know some of you like impartation you know someone is preaching you're not listening until you get to that point where, i decree eh, you become a lot yes to say all the amen beyond the saying the amen there's a conformity there is the work of the holy spirit and that work is to make you conform into his image if you don't get anything i'm saying if you don't get this part, you miss everything. No matter the prayer, no one can lay hands on you for this. It is the Holy Spirit that will take you by the hand and begin to guide you. So you hear me speak now. You're, what you're hearing is this is possible. Then when you experience it, you go to the Lord and say, Lord, in this situation now, I don't know what to do. I know this is your mind. But concerning me, because you want to be sure that you don't regret your actions. There are believers who have had to regret their actions because they've waited for so long. They didn't see any fruit in that action. You didn't see any fruit because you took that action based on yourself. You didn't take that action in his name. Now, in his name doesn't mean I say, I forgive in the name of Jesus. No, no. How do we forgive in his name? Father, this person really hurts me. And Lord, 
in my mind, I know how to deal with this person. But I don't just want to take any action by myself. I know you want me to walk in the path of peace, but Lord, I'm so hurt right now. What would you help me to? Then the Lord will speak to you and say, forgive, let him go. Don't ask him back. Lord, I need your help for this. So I will help you. I will obey you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And you carry it in your heart because he's spoken to you. So his word will be before your eyes. So you see that person. And guess what? The person might even be boasting. Yes, I did. What can he do? Hiya. But you know what will come before your eyes? The word of the Lord. You will see the word of the Lord before your eyes. Say, yay, Lord. I believe you. I believe you. Guess what? He bears the responsibility of that hurt. He bears the responsibility of your reward. See that now? So you will look back in a few weeks, in a few months and say, hmm. Thank God I let go. Because he's going to put you in a place where you cannot be compared to where you were before that thing. This is the truth about our life. This is how we, we dwell in him. We don't just follow because someone said. We follow because we hear his voice. That's what Jesus, Jesus meant. Moses said the same thing. Jesus was referring to Moses. He says, man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. See that now? Man shall live by every word. So listen, your life is about getting words from his mouth. Everything that happens every day in your life is to bring you to that point where you hear a word from his mouth. Oh, someone insulted me at work. Aha, uh -huh. go to the Lord so that words will come out from his mouth. Someone blessed me today. Uh -huh. Go to the Lord in thanksgiving so that words will come out from his life. I didn't like the way someone looked at me today. Go to the Lord so that words will come out from his life. If from, words will come out from his mouth. You see that now? Man shall live by every word. The activities of every day in your life is to provoke words from the mouth of God. But how often do you walk in this consciousness? That's, where we're, that's what we're talking about. Every word that comes out from his mouth, when you obey it, is making you conform into his image. It doesn't matter who has hurt you. It doesn't matter who has done you evil. It doesn't really matter. You see all those things? Gather them and go before him. And say, Lord, what would you have me do? You know, Lord, I'm paralyzed until you speak to me. What will you have me do? And then his word will come to your hearts. His glorious words will come to your hearts. And then you rise up and say, thank you, sir. I'll do it by your strength. Because he gives you the ability to do it. If you do it by your strength, you say, you, you, you say oh, I know God wants me to forgive someone. I'm forgiving you. But anytime you see the person, you, you feel like going to hit that person. You feel like doing something. If you've not forgiven yet, you're doing it by your own strength. When you do it by the strength of the Holy Spirit, there is a joy. You see that hurt that was in your heart? There is a joy He will restore in your heart that you look at the person. You now realize how little this person is. How could I have been thinking this person can hurt me? How? He, he or she is so little. Not, not saying little as in demeaning them. No, but you just realize it, that truly I'm seated with Him in heavenly places. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, we receive your grace and your strength right now. And I pray for everyone watching and listening to me. Fill their hearts with grace to begin to conform to your image and likeness. Cause them to do that work which was preordained for them. That work that would bring them into the image and likeness of God, just like you said from the beginning. I speak to everybody. I speak to your bodies right now. 
anything that is not in line, anything that does not conform to the image and likeness of God. I command it to die in you right now. In Jesus' name. Be free from sickness. Be free from pain. I command joint pains to go from you right now. I, I command the eye issue. Someone, you're watching me. Your eyes are so dizzy. Very dizzy. I command a clear sight in you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go wash your face and begin to see well now. That problem is gone. It's been on for a while. You've been using some eye drops. Yes, you've been using some eye drops. But you have this fear that you're getting blind. I command restoration to your sight right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. My time is really up. Praise God. I'll see you on Monday. Have the best weekend ever. Bye.